Yvette, uh, fantastic to have you back on the program again. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So the season kicks off this weekend. I love the ANZ Premiership. How long have you been in the planning stages, the preparation stages, the pre-season fitness stages, all of that? How long has that been going for you? Yeah, yeah, it's been, well, as, as soon as we finish the um, previous campaign, we're on to the next planning. So it's been a wee while, but we've officially started in November with the team. And um, there's been, you know, players have gone out for civil fern duties, etc. But yeah, it feels like a really long time. So I can't wait to get on the court this weekend. How does it feel? I mean, in, in terms of how does it feel differently to previous seasons? I know that, you know, 20, uh, sorry, 2019, mm-hmm. 2020, the titles, you departed for 2021, came back last year. Is it is it is it completely different preparing this team again this year? It's not completely different. I think there's a lot of aspects that you retain that stay the same in terms of, one, who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And every team will have put down... Um, we all want to be in the ANZ Premiership Grand Final, so that bit doesn't change. But I think for us, the difference has been just settling in new combinations. We've obviously got a few new players in, um, as do other teams. And so just that time it takes just to get the connections right and make sure we've got the clarity, that's taken a wee while. But I feel, yeah, like not perfect at this stage. And um, certainly when you get into the game, we're going to find out a whole lot more about where we're at. But I'm, I'm confident that they're ready. Yeah, you've lost your shooter, Ali, yeah, but um, talk to us about uh, Fa'amu and also Joyce, who are the two acquisitions, the big acquisitions you got. Yeah, yeah, look, Joyce has, you know, had lots of experience over in the UK, over five years playing over there, and brings a real different flavour. She's more of a moving shooter and can go out and play goal attack as well, so she offers us um, both those positions um, for our team, and Fa'amu has played a huge amount. She was in New Zealand under 21, so success, successful in Botswana with the gold medal, so huge amount of experience and being around franchise netball, but just hadn't played a huge amount. So for both of them, the exposure um, of regular court time and that ability to, to really step up into this you know, environment in ANZ Premiership is a good challenge, but we've been really impressed, impressed with their ability to leave home, settle in, um, get the you know get all the work under their belt. So looking forward to seeing them um, shine. And of course, having last year, we had our three... Ainsley Anna, Paris Mason and Amelia who played Manawa uh, in the in and out league and they've really stepped up this season so looking forward to seeing the young ones have their you know moment as well. You know when you look at it overall and I know that you would have had a, you know, an eagle eye on that South African tournament and that's the pinnacle of it obviously watching the international netball is the sport and the players improving because to me every time I watch I always think wow they are actually getting better it always seems more athletic it always seems more physical. Yeah, and I think just watching other nations, I mean, we look at, and and it's been on the rise for some time, look at the African nations, but everybody, the gap's closing. And I think when the gap closes in terms of making a competitive environment, that really lifts the standard of others. The fact that we've got a number of athletes, not only here in New Zealand, but Australia, and now there's, um, through both Australia and the UK, more and more international athletes getting exposure to a semi-professional environment. It just lifts your ability to train more consistently, to, to be physically in better shape and to make netball a focus. And I think we see that in the reflection of performances. So you're right, it is it is more physical and it demands a whole lot more. But um, I'm really impressed with how, you know, people are able to continue to keep making transitions, including, you know, look at for us, the, the Tianas and uh, Whitney, she's been around for a really long time and still to see that growth incremental growth in players is um, that's what it's all about really at the end of the day how do we keep preparing them for international performances Yeah well obviously with that World Champs at the end of the year and I want to touch on that in a second mm-hmm. Yvette McCausen, jury is with us head coach of the Central Pulse and the, the Championship the Premiership rather kicks off this weekend look I had Scott Robertson on the programme last weekend and asked him also about the All Black coach but just more about more about actually preparing that Crusaders side and how do you motivate the motivator? Like, you know, when you've overachieved like like you have yourself, how do, how do you get up in the morning and think, okay, I'm going to get better. This is what I improve on. Do you have a list of things that you write down? There's always a list, isn't it? And I think when you give up wanting to improve, then you're probably in the wrong space. So I just look at this group and I think that, you know, my job is to facilitate progress and that progress is both from an an individual perspective and how we can make sure that they're being looked at and at least getting their names on the page for consideration Um, and along with that how do we continue to reflect 
what our franchise is about and, and a brand of netball that brings fans in and makes them you know engaged and want to be back next week so there's a huge amount of pressure in terms of performance but I enjoy that element of it and I enjoy the unknown that sport is I mean if we didn't have that you wouldn't turn up but who knows what the result's going to be you can do all this work and you look at your team and you think yep they're ready you get out there and you think oh read that right <laughs> and equally you might have a you know a challenging week and you get there and think oh I didn't see that coming so yeah I love I love the challenge of working with people and when you work with people there's always um you know some diversions that occur at different stages might be a dumb question but how much do you like winning and how important is winning to you you know in terms of everything to do with what your job is yeah, winning's a really big part of it. It's in a, you know, it's a business that invests a huge amount of money, and um, they expect results. And so, it's finding what actually does winning mean. So, winning games is important, and but actually, there's those other little wins along the way, which is about evolving individuals, about seeing them grow, about seeing them um, look to take on things beyond this game, and and looking at their careers. It's about making sure that we get fans who feel connected, that we've got young kids who have aspirations to one day wear, wear the yellow dress and can see a pathway. It's about our in and our team feeling connected um, at that Manawa level to who we are and that we have a you know, huge space for them. So I think it's about that as much about the winning. Um, it feels way better when you win, even mm, if it's only course. by one yeah. goal. <laughs> yeah. It's just... Uh, But sometimes, you know, it can hide a number of challenges. So it's being realistic that sometimes you can win and not perform well. And sometimes you can lose and have done everything you can. So uh, that sport, I I love that about sport, that it's the ultimate challenge of finding that balance. And you get judged every week. And I talk to players about that. You know, what job do you go to that every time you front up, you are getting assessed and judged? Um, You know, some people might do a 360 degree in their work once every four years, but these guys turn up every day, whether they're in the gym, they're on the court, they're in games, That's they're getting judged on whether they're making progress. So you've got to have a certain mentality to survive that and enjoy it. Look, I'm asking you a couple of the same questions that I asked um, Scott Robertson as well, because I'm just fascinated by this. I mean, you get to know mm. people on a level um, that you know very few people get. I mean, you, you can be a boss in any kind of business, but I kind of think that there's a certain and I don't know whether int- intimacy is the right word, but, you, you know, you're, you're, you're dealing with emotions, you're dealing with personalities, you're dealing with lives outside of it, and you're dealing with really high performance as well. So how do you distance yourself from that? How do you get really close enough to your players? Yeah, it's that balance, isn't it? It's a balance of um, you've, you care, but you've got to find that attention of how do they um, enable themselves to be able to self-reflect? How do they look after themselves in a way that, they can maintain confidence and when they don't that you've created enough of a performance environment where they can ask the questions and that they trust that their feedback is actually about helping them grow and actually about helping them improve rather than, um, you know, and I guess it's doing things in a manner enhancing way that is about uplifting people, but being truthful is uplifting to, to be anything less than that um, isn't actually doing them any good. So I think it's finding that balance and as you say, developing really meaningful relationships take time and for me that stems from a real focus around retention making sure that my question isn't you know I'm going to decide whether you get a contract my question is always do you want to stay is this where you want to be can you see that together we're actually making a difference for you and um, if not what does it need to look like or if you need to move on how do we help you do that in a way that, um, you know, New Zealand's small, you should always be able to look each other in the eye and have been truthful in that process. So, yeah, I think as you get older, look, time time does a lot for you, but it also helps players when they've had um, a space where they feel they can be vulnerable but also build confidence. And that balance is always a challenging one, but one that I enjoy. It's a jigsaw, isn't it? There are so many bits, so many facets to mm. it, so many pieces to it. Is having the tough conversations, how difficult is that? And is that something that you are always learning to do? Because you've got to be truthful. You've got to be absolutely brutally honest. And sometimes this isn't pleasant. Sometimes you've got to tell somebody something that they don't want to hear, but maybe they need to hear. How difficult is that? Yeah, I think it's always difficult because no one really loves them. I don't know anyone who really loves having a conversation like that. But I think if you work your way through that, it's consistent you have conversations when they're really small things that you can see may lead to um, bigger challenges. If you have those regularly enough, um, actually 
what I find is players are able to come to that point themselves and actually seek the support that they need um, or the clarity that they might need well before it's a you know ambulance at the bottom of the cliff type scenario. Yeah. So well, that's one of our ultimate goals is actually developing that in individuals themselves so that they can have those performance conversations with each other and it isn't personal. And look, I think it takes a wee while and I think for, for young women and we're dealing with, you know, we've got 18-year-olds through to... Um, 28 year olds so quite a span but it's not an easy thing to do uh, to take out the personal piece but it's part of the growing them and part of the learning and part of thinking about them as a holistic individual uh, in the end you want them to when they leave this game to be able to contribute in other areas and to have that ability to have emotional intelligence is really important Oh, it was such an exciting year. Same as the rugby, same as the All Blacks. I mean, we've got the Silver Ferns, mm-hmm. you know, playing for the World Championship. So this is, look, you've got six teams there. The tactics look as though that they have just done everything they possibly can to finally sort of break this hoodoo and actually win one. But I'm looking at all of those teams. I don't know about you, but I find it, I, I think there's a wafer between every single one of them. And I honestly believe it's a, it is as, yeah, it's as, it feels to me as open as it's ever been. It's tight, eh? It's, I think there'll be some really tight matches, um, that ability to, you know, mentally stay in the game and continue to compete will be huge. So, no, I, I've got a huge amount of respect for every team and always back our team and um, we'll continue to get out there and fight every week but can't wait to get started. Really look forward to catching up with you during the season. Always appreciate your time and your honesty. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.